comes to taking responsibility for your own life, we all know what we should do. We don't need to be told how to behave, how to treat ourselves and each other. But while we have all this information, why don't we actually do that? So the answer is that so many of us get stuck in our journey and we get blocked by fear. The number one reason that stops people from taking action in their own life towards what they love and value is fear. So in this lesson, I share with you how to use the pain and pleasure principle to rewire yourself and achieve your goals, your dreams, your desires much more effortlessly going forward. This will help you to move towards what you love and value with much more courage, conviction and clarity. A huge part of self-love is also doing what we love and care about, what fills us with joy, lifts our spirit and make us feel fulfilled on the inside giving us a meaningful purpose, helping us learn and grow and add value to not only our own life, but also the life of others. So taking self-responsibility really means looking at every aspect of our lives, whether it's relationships, friendships, or hobbies or activities, what kind of work we do, how we look after our body, or mind or spirit and anything in between and really assessing whether all of those activities are self-loving, whether we truly take responsibility for everything we are creating in our lives or whether we are hiding and making excuses. And I tell you what, authenticity in this respect truly is everything. So the first things first, breaking from the victimhood cycle. Have you ever felt like the whole universe is working against you? You put so much effort into a project at work only to be met with criticism and lack of appreciation from your boss. Your car won't start, you spill the coffee on your favorite top, your kids don't respect you, you may feel used, abused, rejected by other people, and then you start to doubt yourself and fear that more of that will happen in the future. You may move into a self-blame, even depression and powerlessness, accepting victimhood as an inescapable reality. For some people, victimhood may actually be a form of a secondary gain, whereby complaining about how bad things are they get more love and support from those around them. And while receiving love is a positive thing, how you achieve it is a completely different question. If you believe that the only way you deserve love and support from others is by having some sort of drama in your life, then you may be unconsciously creating pain for yourself in order to get what you want, that love and approval from other people. These behaviors are mostly unconscious to us and they stem from our childhood conditioning. For example, if an emotionally unavailable parent withheld love and approval from their child, the child may have developed creative ways how to receive the desired love, support and approval. This may have included things like getting sick, hurting him or herself, creating other pain in their life to feel loved and supported by their parents. Because love is our greatest human need, we want it at all costs, even if it means sabotaging ourselves to get it. These behaviors and neural associations will carry into our adult life unless we decide to become aware of them, interrupt the pattern and rewire our pain and pleasure associations. Taking your power back and breaking free from victimhood is crucial in becoming a sovereign, mature adult who is fully present, conscious and self-aware. In the following section, we talk about how the pain and pleasure principle drives our decision. The pain and pleasure principle is at the core of all of our choices we make. 
all of our beliefs, values, decisions and actions are built upon this principle. It is the foundation of who we are in how pain and pleasure are interpreted based on our past life experiences. In basic terms, we seek pleasure to reward ourselves with immediate gratification whilst seeking to avoid pain. If our brain unconsciously associates a certain activity with more pain than pleasure, it will keep you away from it, even if you want it. For example, if you want to be successful in your business, but your brain has some unconscious associations where it believes that success equates to loss of freedom or potential rejection by your customers or students, it will keep you away from it to avoid pain. On the other hand, if you have neural associations about something you desire and if it is linked to receiving more pleasure than pain, then your brain will naturally move you towards it. Our brain needs direction and by feeding it self-belief, certainty of success, clarity, it creates a powerful energy of expectation that leads to the result you desire. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a relationship that has been deeply unfulfilling, but you were choosing to stay even though you were not happy? This is because you associated more pain with leaving than pleasure of finding someone new. And that pain of leaving may have included things like pain of having to move out, pain of finding a new place to live, pain of feeling lonely, or even pain and fear around future dating, maybe pain and fear around being rejected by someone you go on a date with. And in this instance, you were motivated by pain and all of your subsequent decisions and actions reflected that. It was more painful for you to take a chance and make a change than continuing to stay in what you know in your comfort zone. But we all have limits and every single one of us has this invisible threshold beyond which we won't go. Sadly, only when we reached our pain threshold, we finally flip over to the other side and start to feel motivated by pleasure. So for example, someone who was in an abusive relationship may continue to stay year after year after year, but eventually they will reach a point where they cannot take any more pain. And only then they make a decision to leave. This is when they start to be motivated by pleasure of new beginnings, hope in finding something better, and a desire to feel love again. But we can be much more proactive about the pain and pleasure principle in our life than having to wait till our pain threshold is reached. So I'll now share with you my five-step process on how to change your neural associations around pain and pleasure to create what you love and value in your life much more effortlessly. Step number one is, if you want to change your behavior, observe what you associate pain and pleasure with in your life. And Allow yourself to go pretty deep on this. If you want to move towards something better, be sure to raise its value and link it to experiencing joy and pleasure as a result. So, for example, if you want to attract a better relationship, then start to tell yourself and why yourself with the idea that that no relationship represents the opportunity of love, joy and pleasure and satisfaction, feeling of connection and start telling your brain that that is all safe and positive and exciting and it will bring you pleasure and joy. And then write down 
all the things that you get to miss out on if you don't change your direction and remain stuck where you are now so for example here are all the things i get to miss out on that i associate with pain if i don't start proactively dating putting myself out there and and allowing myself to meet a, a man or a woman of my dreams who will represent the joy connection and love that i desire so write down all the reasons why you will feel pain and this could be things like a pain of feeling lonely potentially pain of not being able to give yourself the chance of having a family having children and list down anything else that will actually represent pain if you don't proactively put yourself out there to start dating and and uh, consciously moving towards the thing you desire the most this will tell your brain that there is more pain linked to staying the same and you will feel a rush of courage propelling you towards a change the step number four is all about creating a sense of confidence having confidence in yourself is not something that you get but rather create from allowing yourself to experience life and trusting that you are learning along the way trusting that you're capable enough to handle anything in life learn from it and become stronger and wiser you are not a victim of your life or circumstances you are in fact the powerful creator of your destiny and your ultimate power is in how you direct your mind to create what you love and value so start using the pain and pleasure principle in your life to wire in all those things that you're seeking as pleasure and tell your brain why is it pleasure and why it brings you safety and security and certainty so your brain will naturally move you towards those but also be very clear about telling your brain what are the things that will actually be painful to you if you don't achieve them and in the case of the the example of a relationship that i've mentioned earlier if you choose to remain stuck in a situation where you are in an for example in an abusive relationship and are not willing to make a move you know what are all the things that you get to miss out on for example you get to miss out on a loving connection of opportunity of meeting someone new or perhaps even an opportunity of having a family having children so what are all the things that, that will be super painful to you if you miss out on if you don't give yourself the chance of going out putting yourself out there and meeting that man or a woman of your dreams um, you deserve the best and I want you to know that and I want you to trust yourself as you move through your lives a lot of us struggle with this and the only way to become a master of trusting ourselves is by repeatedly practicing self-trust self-connection self-confidence and self-worth and it has to be something that comes from the inside because then it will shine through and be reflected to us on the outside